Hi again, everyone. Welcome into Inside Sports. I'm Mark Keller back with you again. Week one of high school football is in the books in Washington County. Mostly still one game pending, but five county teams came out victorious in week one. Two first time head coaches got their first wins. We're not going to talk about any of that. Maybe a tiny sliver at the end of the show, but we talked all football last week. This week, we're giving you a preview of some of the other sports that are now underway with the help of our insiders from the Herald Mail. Kevin Dunleavy is here to give us the lowdown on boys and girls soccer. Dan Kaufman will break down the new volleyball season. And sports editor Andy Mason fills us in on the state of cross country in Washington County. Those guys are the experts. We're looking forward to hearing them share their insight with you. Kevin is up first with soccer. He joins me here on set after the break. Stay with us. When you elevate nurses, you reduce an entire town's blood pressure. Specialized medical training means top nurses, top care. Meritus. Healthcare transformed. How do you give a patient healthier health care? Give her doctor, nurse, PA, and therapist the same health record. Introducing electronic health records. One patient, one record, one click. Meritus. Healthcare transformed. For the last two years of my education, I was going to work full-time, school full-time, and raising two young children by myself. I think that anybody who's desiring to continue their education or to advance their career, I think that USMH provides convenient location, affordable pricing, and again, they have instructors that really care about sending their students off with the experience and the education that they need to succeed. When it comes to hearing loss, who will be taking care of you? Audiologist Dr. Karen Hamilton is Hagerstown's hearing doctor, working to improve the quality of life for those with hearing loss. At Audiology Services, Dr. Hamilton focuses on evaluation and diagnosis to provide solutions for treating hearing loss. Using the latest technology, she programs hearing aids to meet your unique needs and ensures they fit properly and comfortably. Audiology Services participates with most insurance companies and will check benefits and file claims on your behalf. Dr. Hamilton and her team also serve the community through Hagerstown Hearing, which focuses on providing crystal clear sound in places such as theaters, churches, offices, and homes. Hagerstown Hearing installs looping systems that allows those with hearing loss to enjoy speech clarity and noise reduction, providing an experience like never before. To learn more about audiology services and Hagerstown Hearing, call 301-790-3300. Audiology services and Hagerstown Hearing, providing crystal clear sound. Welcome back into Inside Sports, kicking off week two of our fall preview, the football-free zone this week, uh, except for the what the world knows is football. We're going to talk some soccer here now with Harrow Mail insider Kevin Dunleavy, and Kevin will start with the girls' side uh, and look at the team first that had the most success last season in Boonesboro, advanced all the way to the state semifinals, and they look to be loaded again this season. Yeah, a lot of starters back and uh, really more than uh, – a lot of starters that that got in through injury so it's more it's almost like they've got more than 11 starters which is a big and then they got star power with Ali Reineman, Faith Dracy in the goal and Savannah Plumador uh, so a lot of scoring a lot of and they're always a defensive minded team so there's hard hard to find any cracks in them uh, they could even have a few injuries and probably survive it and uh, wouldn't even miss a beat so great success in the south part of Washington County we look over to the eastern part and Boonesboro's arch rival in Smithsburg, coming off a good year last year as well and a coaching change there this season, but really no stranger to the program and their new coach. Yeah, Bill Folks has been uh, assisting Victor Delamia for several years and he was the head coach back in the, you know, back about a decade ago and had a lot of success winning state championships. And uh, um, so I don't think there'll be much of a transition there. He's gonna play the same formation and he's got some really good talent back to build around with Kara Poole, Bailey Grove, Hannah Spinks, a lot of offensive firepower and uh, Riley McKinnon takes over in goal and uh, you know she's pretty experienced and uh, they shouldn't uh, they shouldn't have any drop off there either. So the Boonesboro Smithsburg matchup that rivalry game that uh, people look forward to so much one to see this year I'm guessing. Yeah that should be the two best teams although it's so balanced in the in the county we've seen this in the past that uh, these teams are pretty evenly matched all up and down because the programs are so solid. Let's go to the western side of uh, Washington County now and, and Clear Spring, uh, you know, another team with a lot of success and uh, a lot of experience coming back, but they lost two key cogs from last year's successful team. 
Yeah, Megan Byers in goal was the big one because they weren't, they don't have a, a goalie that's being, that was being groomed from uh, last year. I don't know what happened with their JV goalie, but, uh, you know, G Gabby uh, Conrad was their top scorer in the, uh, but they've still got a lot of talent. They've got eight returning starters, I believe. Maddie Ramachati is an outstanding player. Uh, they're a little thin beyond the starters, but uh, if, those, if they can stay away from injury, they'll be a really good team. 1A playoffs should be a lot of fun here in Washington County. Who's one other team uh, on the girls' side to kind of keep an eye on this season? I'd say Williamsport. They had a real bad year last year. They lost one of their best players, Mackenzie Dudley, with a torn ACL. She's back. Uh, she's more than a scorer. She's a real inspirational leader. She's going to help that team a lot. Um, and then Lanny pa Palomar is, uh, you know, is a really good player too. They're, and they've got a bunch of young players that were kind of forced in the lineup last year, and I think that'll pay d uh, dividends this year. And we'll see. Uh, you know, they could they could be as good as uh, as the top teams in the county. I think. And it should be fun to watch. So let's switch over to boys soccer now. And uh, again, we'll talk about a, a successful team from last year in Clear Spring. Second straight county tournament title last year went all the way to the state semifinals, but it's going to be a much tougher road for Clear Spring this year. Yeah, uh, they lose Jarrett Lazich. Everybody knows him, but it was a whole, almost an entire starting lineup of players that they lost and a lot of really good players. Um, They've got two starters back. Uh, they are very well coached, though, and uh, so they're not going to be a pushover, but the talent level is definitely down. And uh, maybe a 500 team, uh, being over 500 would be difficult for them, I think. Uh, how about Boonesboro? It's kind of uh, a, a team last year that, uh, that you know, may be on the rise this year. Yeah, they lost uh, their probably their three best players, but uh, two of them are playing in college now. Um, but all the other guys are back. They've got eight returning starters, uh, led by Mike Long is, is the coach, and he's got his two sons uh, and his uh, nephew that are playing and will be the, really build, or build the team around those, those three Longs. So uh, they'll be an interesting team to watch. Uh, losing a midfielder like Alex Petty is really tough because he just controlled games so well. Uh, but maybe one of these Long kids can, uh, can fill that role. Uh, you mentioned Mike Long and the coaching. We go to Williamsport and Chris Downs, a great coaching record as well. He's really got his work cut out for him this year with the number of kids that they lost to graduation. Thirteen players yeah. lost to graduation from last year. That's going to be a tough deal, but uh, they had a lot of JV players last year that Chris said could have played varsity and would have been, you know, suitable players. Uh, so there's a lot of players coming up that'll that'll get their first chance at varsity that probably will be look very comfortable on the field. So I think they can be better than, uh, than what it might look like on paper. Let's look over at North Hagerstown and, and uh, you know, kind of the opposite of, of Williamsport and yeah. that they finished at the 500 mark last season, but they return a lot of experience from last year. Yeah, they're really loaded. Uh, I think all the coaches talking to them in the preseason really were looking at uh, North Hagerstown as the team to beat as far as, you know, inter-county competition. Uh, Travis Bamfo is a really good scorer, and Isaiah Dell and his uh, brother Caleb, uh, really experienced club players. They bring a lot, and uh, they've got a really good goalie. So they've got a little bit of everything, and uh, they've got a lot of young players that are coming up that will just make them a little deeper. I think they lacked a little bit of depth last year, but they should be, you know, they can go 16, 15, 17, 15 16 deep this year maybe. We talked a lot about public schools. Let's look on the private side as well. St. Maria Goretti, uh, also lots of yeah. experience coming back. Could be without their top scorer, James Searcy, for a little while here, though. He's finally back. Uh, he had a, a lower body injury. I'm not sure what it was, but, uh, you know, he scored something ridiculous like uh, 75 goals in 58 <laughs> games. It's, I, I forgot what the number is, but, you know, he's, uh, he's almost impossible to stop. He's got a combination of size and speed and, uh, and skills that's really unmatched by any striker uh, in the county this year. Jarrett Lazich was similar to him last year, but in a much smaller package. But uh, seriously, he's the big body with, uh, with, the, with the speed of Lazich, probably. Are there any teams, any players who might uh, sort of catch us by surprise on the boys' side this year? That's a... You're throwing that one at me. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> thought about it. Uh, I'm sure there are, but I, I can't come up with anybody right now. Maybe Smithsburg will surprise a little bit. They lose a lot of players, but it seems like they're building something over there with uh, with some interest. And, uh, um, you know, they 
they probably will be much better than they were last year, even after losing about 11 seniors. Okay. Sorry to catch you by surprise That's okay. with that. <laughs> so, uh, all right, Kevin, thanks a bunch for joining us here. We appreciate it. Uh, Dan Kaufman will be in next. We're going to talk high school volleyball here in Washington County after the break. Stay with us. We've been coming to Rick's for about three or four years. The staff at Rick's is wonderful. It is the cheers of Hagerstown. Everybody knows your name. They've actually become a lot of our friends. They treat you like family. They know you by name. It's nice to be able to go somewhere as quality as this that's not a chain restaurant. The food is unique. They get fresh. creative. Yeah. It's fresh food. And they make great drinks. <laughs> the word is in. Local, casual, and always epic. That's Rick's Cafe. At Hagerstown Community College, we know that finding the right career isn't always easy, but when you find your passion, you can make things happen. Engineers solve problems. Educators shape the future. Healthcare providers save lives. Cyber experts prevent loss. Writers tell the story. What will you do? HCC offers more than 100 programs of study so you can find the path that's right for you. Live your story at HCC. Welcome back into Inside Sports. Kevin Dunleavy has left us. We bring in now Dan Kaufman, another Herald Mail insider. Dan, good to have you back with us. Thank We're you. going to talk some high school volleyball here this segment. And most conversations about volleyball in Washington County start with kind of the big three, Dan, Williamsport, Smithsburg, and North Hagerstown. We're going to start elsewhere. We're going to go against the grain a little bit. We're going to talk about Heritage Academy first. Uh, another very successful program here in the county. Another Mason Dixon Christian Conference title last year. Another state title, but only two returning starters this year. But one of them happens to be Michaela Hoy. Right, and obviously our player, reigning player of the year, um, yeah, helped Heritage Academy sweep Smithsburg in probably the most stunning result of uh, 2017. Uh, but she has not been at full strength. Uh, she missed a match uh, at the start of the year, and then most recently she played, but she also played mostly back row, just in a kind of a defensive role. Hasn't really been unleashing big bombs up front yet. Uh, coach said that it's mostly just due to tiredness, keeping her fresh for later. Uh, we'll see. I don't know if there's any other injury things or whatever that we don't know about. Um, but I expect that she's going to be back in her normal role, uh, unleashing some bombs here in the near future. It's going to be tough for Heritage to repeat their team success because, you know, the unheralded part of that team is they did have some depth last year. They had a second key hitter. They had key defensive pieces. They had a number of servers who could, you know, put pressure on an opposing uh, service serve receive. They don't really have a whole lot of that. They're very, very young this year, very inexperienced. So obviously Michaela, when she's at full strength, is going to get them some wins just because of how good she is. Uh, but I don't think you're going to see them uh, quite as strong this year overall. You know, we'll take, take a look and see how, how far the reigning player of the year can carry uh, Heritage this year. Now to the big three, and every year Smithsburg, Williamsport, North Hagerstown uh, in contention for a state title. But the Leopards, the only one to pull off the feat last year, uh, brought home its 13th state title and eighth in nine years. And Oh, yeah. They have five starters returning this year. Right, and two big key ones, Sydney Scott, uh, their big uh, hitter on the outside, and also Katie McCracken, who, in my opinion, is the best setter in Washington County. She doesn't only set, she's a very good at the net, putting away second touch kills, and she can, she has a blocking presence up there that you don't see from many setters. Uh, they also have two uh, younger girls in uh, Sid, uh, Sydney Hammond and Hannah Lund, who are both very capable attacking players, haven't had to take on full-time roles really at the net. This will probably be their year now that uh, Lauren Daniels has graduated. This will probably be the year that you see bigger things out of both of them. So as usual, Smithsburg's loaded and they're going for a lot of state history this year. They can tie Williamsport and Centennial with 14 state titles. They can obviously win uh, nine in 10 years, which I'm not sure has ever been done in state history. So a lot there. Yeah, you got to figure they're going to be one of the odds on favorites Absolutely. for sure. In 2A, Williamsport did take a hit in graduation. They lost six seniors, but they still have three returning starters back. And they get a big re uh, key returner back in um, um, Kiara Lewis, who missed most of last season with a broken finger that required surgery. And, you know, we, we honestly wondered how, how far would Williamsport fall last year after that injury. And the truth is they had a lot of girls step up uh, and play pretty well for them. And a few of them are, are back. Um, 
Uh, they've got some talent around Kiara. Obviously, Kiara is going to be their number one hitter. Uh, and she's really looking forward to this season. She knows she's got colleges looking at her, so she's really motivated. Um, you know, they've got to fill uh, key spots at Setter and Libero. Uh, Brittany Malfers and Alyssa Shoemaker were key players for them last year. Um, but, you know, Williamsport's coached really well. Uh, they have a program. They have tradition. They'll find people to plug in, and they're going to be very good again. Let's go up to 3A and the, the third member of the big three, as we call them, North Hagerstown. Yeah. They also lost a couple of key players at graduation, but still bring back a lot of experience and some young ex experience as well. Exactly. Drew Wallach, who was all-county first team as a freshman last year. Chloe Coulter, who was a very close cut off the first team. She was a second teamer as a sophomore last year. Uh, and they've got lots of pieces around them, a lot more experience. They were really young last year, as we mentioned. Wallach and Coulter, two of their key pieces, were a freshman and a sophomore last year. Now they've got another year of experience. Um, they've got some, some defensive holes to fill. Uh, they lost Libero Santa Starkey to graduation. That's probably the key loss that they have to fill. But Coach Crawford does an amazing job teaching defense. They're always rock solid fundamentally back there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, as always, we're looking forward to these North Williamsport, North Smithsburg, Williamsport, Smithsburg coll collisions because they're going to be fantastic once again. Yeah, they should be great. They always are uh, uh, must-see TV, as, uh, as you'd like to say. <laughs> uh, kind of outside that big three, four new coaches in Washington mm -hmm. County this season. Which one do you think could have the biggest impact on their program? I'm looking forward to see what Shelby Wallace can do at Boonesboro. She was a setter at Boonesboro, uh, graduated in 2013, I believe, uh, somewhere in that range, if I'm not exactly right. Uh, Boonesboro has significant talent returning. They have uh, two gr key girls up front, Allie Getridge and Stacia Galagli, who are, again, very talented. They've got some size to them, leaping ability. They should make a formidable attack. Carly Lloyd is a fantastic libero that they have anchor in the back of the defense. I really think that they could step up and improve. Obviously, the big name who's stepping into the coaching ranks is Peyton Wallach, a former player of the year at North Hagerstown, led them to state, the state championship as a senior. Uh, and St. James has already had a pretty strong program there. Trinity Schlotterbeck is their top girl coming back. I believe they have three other returning starters as well. So St. James is going to vie for that IPSL championship with St. Maria Goretti most likely. And those two schools have actually have a little pretty good rivalry going on right now as well. Um, and so I think both of those coaches have a chance to really shine. And I think Lauren Serafini at Grace Academy and Shelby Kearns at Hancock, both of those programs had winning records last year. I don't really see any major reason why that won't continue. Grace Academy has uh, Katie Morgan and all county first team are back and Hancock returns uh, six starters from from their squad of a year ago. So really all four of these new coaches should be in pretty good positions to uh, to have good first seasons. All right sounds good. Well Dan thanks a lot for joining us. We are going to have live coverage of the Williamsport uh, at Smithsburg volleyball match on Wednesday September 26th uh, right here on WCL TV channel 6 and 806 on Antietam Broadband. You can also see it uh, on the uh, WCO On The Go app uh, on Android or iOS as well. So you can watch the game from your phone, from your uh, tablet as well. So be sure to join us on Wednesday, September 26th for live coverage of that Williamsport Smithsburg match. We'll have Andy Mason joining us here for Cross Country Previews right after the break. Frostburg's program at USMH was definitely closer to home, allowed me to stay at home while I had the opportunity to substitute in Washington County Public Schools. The scholarships at USMH really allowed me to walk out, being able to pay it off much more quickly and being able to pursue my graduate degree at a quicker rate. I would say to anyone considering USMH allows you to build better relationships in the community and something that's definitely a great opportunity to pursue and leads to a better career. We've been coming to Rick's for about three or four years. The staff at Rick's is wonderful. It is the cheers of Hagerstown. Everybody knows your name. They've actually become a lot of our friends. Treat you like family. They know you by name. It's nice to be able to go somewhere as quality as this that's not a chain restaurant. The food is unique. They get fresh. creative. Yeah. It's fresh food. And they make great drinks. <laughs> the word is in. Local, casual, and always epic. That's Rick's Cafe. Welcome back to Inside Sports, everybody. Finishing things out here today, talking about some cross-country previews with Herald Mail insider Andy Mason. And Andy, when we had Dan Kaufman in here talking volleyball, we kind of went against the grain and didn't talk about Williamsport, Smithsburg, and North Hagerstown first. But it's really difficult not to begin the conversation 
about cross country without talking about Boonesboro and the girls program first. Yeah, the girls program, they've won um, the last three Maryland Class 1A state titles. If they win a fourth this year, which I'd say they're favored to do, it'll tie um, an all-time state record for most consecutive uh, state titles won by a girls team. They'll, they'll probably do it. Um, you can't just, you know, it's not going to be a layup. Brunswick is very good. Last year, Brunswick uh, shocked them at the at the West Region Championships that they finished with the same score, but uh, Brunswick uh, won by the tiebreaker rule. Their six runner beat Boonesboro's six runner. And that was a team that had um, six freshmen and one senior. Now, it's, that senior was their number one runner. She's gone for Brunswick, but they're going to, you know, they've got some young runners that they've improved. They're going to they're gonna be a handful again for Boonesboro. Now, last year, Boonesboro, that, you know, kind of, woke them up. They came back and handled them at States, but it was close. Yeah, nothing like a, a loss in the region to kind of wake right. you up for the, for the States. And uh, uh, it's, it's kind of funny that, you know, so much of what, what happens in, in local sports, we talk about county, county titles, but with Boonesboro, it's all about the state titles. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, the county, I don't see, I think they've only won, so they've won three straight state titles, just two straight county titles. A couple years ago, Smithsburg was very good beat them at counties and that sort of woke them up and you know they Smithsburg finished second to Boonesboro that year at states um, but this year I think if any team in the county has a shot to Boonesboro girls it might be North Hagerstown. North Hagerstown last year won the 3A West title then finished I believe 11th at states um, but yeah they they won the 3A West title after finishing behind Boonesboro at the county meet but they've uh, they've got a great top five the thing with Boonesboro is they've got 34 girls on their team so that's a huge <laughs> team so they're always going to have a strong top seven, and out of those top seven, you're always going to have five runners who are going to have a good day for you, typically. Yeah. That's usually how it works for them. Let's look at the boys' side, and, and as far as teams go, and much the same, we'll talk about Boonesboro first. Yeah, Boonesboro. I mean, they're, um, they've won five straight county titles, um, looking for six straight this year. Uh, last year, they finished third at state. Smithsburg was fourth. Smithsburg's very good this year. Um, Smithsburg has a great top three. Boonesboro's got a great top five, great top seven. Smithsburg's got a great top three. Now, Smithsburg just won the uh, small school title at the Interstate Classic last weekend at Clear Spring. Boonesboro finished second in the large school race. So um, they, they, for some reason, were in the large school division. Had they been, had they been small school, Boonesboro would have beaten them. Um, but yeah, Smithsburg, Smithsburg's looking good. Um, but yes, yeah, uh, right now Boonesboro is being led by Henry Schmidt, a senior who trained seemingly very hard over the summer. He went out and won the Interstate Classic, got the boys title there. I don't know if a Boonesboro boys ever, ever won a title there. That's a pretty big season opening meet. Um, he ran 16-15. Last year, the county championships were held at Clear Spring, same course. He ran 16-38 in probably the best race of his life and got second. This year, meet one, he's 23 seconds faster than that, and he's looking very fit. Things looking good for, for Boonesboro there and for, for Henry Schmidt as well. Yeah. Any, anything else in that Interstate Classic that Yeah, that well, I can tell you who you? wasn't there was North Hagerstown. Mm -hmm. You know, we, North hasn't raced yet as of us talking right now, and they have Nate McKenzie, who uh, was the Herald Mail Runner of the Year last year. Um, you know, so I'm very interested in seeing how he looks. I, his coach told me a few weeks ago he's in the shape of his life. Last, you know, last fall he had some great races. Um, Henry Schmidt gave him a little push at the county championships, and you know it might come down to those two again. Uh, on the girls' side, as far as uh, individual runners, uh, North and South Hagerstown there as well, both with uh, some outstanding yeah, individuals. Yeah, so yeah, they sort of have a rivalry going. Um, see, who's Emily Alexander from South, who's now a senior now, she finished fifth in the large school race at the Interstate Classic, a nice season opening meet for her. And Phoebe Meehan, who's now a sophomore at North Hagerstown, they're sort of the clear-cut top two girls in the county right now. They went back and forth all last school year in cross country and track, and I sort of, I, you might expect the same this fall. Yeah. Any, any, any thoughts, any predictions as to who might have the upper hand there between the two of them? Oh, boy. <laughs> that's, that's tough to say. That's tough to say. Um, last year, by, toward the end of the season, Phoebe Meehan was looking stronger. Phoebe beat Emily at the county meet. And then she beat her at the region meet. And then at the state meet, Emily Alexander had the, the best race of anyone in the county. So it's tough to say. On the track, it seemed like Emily was better at the 1600. Phoebe was better at the 3200. 
Maybe that says Phoebe might be better this cross country, but you, you just you just don't know. Yeah, yeah well, it'll be interesting. We talked a lot about the success of the Boonesboro teams and so forth, and we were kind of uh, joking a little bit beforehand that uh, you know Becky Walter, who has won so many Coach of the Year honors uh, at Boonesboro, may not be in the running for it this year. Yeah, well, <laughs> she she recently had a baby. Yeah, <laughs> uh, just a few weeks ago. So she's she's. Uh, She's away from the team till I understand about mid October. Sean Cutsale, um, who's been her longtime assistant, Becky's in her twelfth. This is this is her twelfth season at Boonesboro. Sean's this, this is his eleventh season as assistant coach. Probably most of those years he's been maybe more like a co-head coach than an assistant. So he's now the interim head coach till she comes back and. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, so uh, cross country coaches in Washington County could could be an opportunity for uh, someone other than yes. Boonesboro uh, to bring home that Coach of the Year honor. So, Andy, thanks a bunch. Really appreciate you being here today. We'll wrap things up for Inside Sports this week right after the break. For the last two years of my education, I was going to work full time, school full time, and raising two young children by myself. I think that anybody who's desiring to continue their education or to advance their career, I think that USMH provides convenient location, affordable pricing, and again, they have instructors that really care about sending their students off with the experience and the education that they need to succeed. If you add it up, 12 spots a year for 25 years, close to 300 different commercials I've used Antietam Cable Production for. In terms of, of the experience with the production department, you know, the truth is you know, we've become friends because we've done it so often. The staff is very, very professional. Uh, they make it easy for me to do the spot. That's the biggest thing. And we, we have a lot of fun doing it. And it works. It brings people to the dealership. And that's all I can ask. Welcome back to Inside Sports. Time to get social now as we close out today's show with our social media segment. Taking a look at some of the sites from around the county and beyond last weekend. Eric Michael is no stranger to Friday Night Lights. He was a longtime football coach in Washington County, now in his ninth year as the county supervisor of athletics. He tweeted this photo of opening night at Clear Spring High School. Nothing more American than Friday Night Lights. That is true. Congratulations to the Blazers on their 41 to nothing victory over Benjamin Franklin and coach Jordan Lowry on his first win as head coach. Williamsport football sent this tweet on Friday as the Wildcats prepared for their season opener at Manchester Valley saying cool guys have a long and distinguished history of getting their butts kicked by intense hard workers. Well, the Wildcats would have to wait a day to take on the Mavericks as they were postponed until Saturday afternoon. But the hard work paid off. Williamsport held a 17-14 lead as Manchester Valley attempted a tying field goal in hopes of sending the game to overtime. And our insider Kevin Dunleavy caught it here. Speaking of overtime, South Hagerstown had to put in a little extra work to win its opener against Hedgesville. Now, the game itself didn't go to overtime, but it did take parts of two days to finish. The majority of the game was played Friday night, but rain and lightning brought it to a halt, meaning the Rebels had to travel back to Hedgesville Saturday morning to play the final 49 seconds. Trailing 33-32, quarterback Timmy Townsend delivered for South. Kevin Dunleavy got us that video too. He was everywhere this weekend. Finally, the North Hagerstown football team had reason to celebrate too. The Hubs blew out Surrattsville 53-0 Friday night, winning their season opener for the second straight year, and the Hubs were pumped after the game. So remember to reach out to us or tag us on social media with all the cool stuff that happens before, during, and after the games or events. On Twitter, we are at 
Inside Sports OL. And on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, it's at Inside Sports Now. That's all the time we have for today. Next week, no regular episode of Inside Sports. Instead, we'll bring you our very first Inside Sports game day from Smithsburg High School on Friday, September 14th. We'll be live at 645, taking you up to kickoff at 7 p.m. of our first live game coverage of the season as the Leopards host St. James School. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great week. Hey, your sisters and your brothers, your haters and your lovers, you got to get up in the streets. <laughs>